The message this morning is titled, Your Thoughts Are a Weapon of Warfare. Your Thoughts Are a Weapon of Warfare. The Bible reading was 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Then, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I pray that God gives us understanding in Jesus' name. This morning, most of us have heard this scripture before. We've read it before. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. What God is saying to you is that whenever you encounter any challenge, although it seems physical, because we are walking in the flesh, we are actually spirits just temporarily using this body. That is why for medical doctors and people in the medical field, if somebody still has a heartbeat, even if they are in a vegetative state, they are not going to bury them. Because there is still spirit, there is still life in that thing. But once that spirit goes, that spirit has now left the body that God says you can use this body for 80 years. You can use this body for 70 years. You can use this. But we seem to celebrate the body and diminish the, the spirit. And it's the opposite. When the Bible says he created us in his image and after his likeness, it doesn't mean that we look like God in the physical. He's saying that there's a spirit which is God. And that spirit that he has breathed into us is what looks like God. Our color, our hair, these are just things that from environment, circumstances where you live, it comes. So you must be more concerned about your spirit. Now, the closest you get to your spirit, for example, is when you sleep and you are dreaming. Your physical body is where it is, but your spirit may take you to where you grew up and you would have a vivid encounter. That's your spirit. Now, that spirit is what is also your thoughts. Now, most people limit their thoughts to whatever they are doing and they've limited their lives. Your thoughts will be the sum total, the sum total of your thoughts will be what your life would be. Do you get what I'm saying? So if you are thinking defeat, ultimately you'll be defeated. Have you noticed that whenever athletes are doing something or a big performer is doing something and the camera zooms in on them, they are just about to run the 100 meters race. The guy hasn't won. The race hasn't started. But if they zoom in, you will see the one that will win talking to himself. He will start saying, I'm the champion. Today is the day. I'm going to win. I can see it. I have victory. I taste it. I smell it. You, when you see them doing all this, <laughs> you are looking, what's wrong with him? He's speaking the reality from his unconsciousness to his consciousness. He's calling those things that be not as though they are. He's calling the finish line to himself. And then you see some people timid. If I can even enter the last, at least I will finish. If only I can finish, then they will finish the race. If you go into battle, you don't go there to participate, you go there to win. Now the Bible is saying the weapons of this warfare they are not carnal. It's not in boxing and in shouting. It is by taking the thoughts of your mind and getting them captive under the word of God to the obedience of the word of God. You must now speak to yourself. Even our forefathers, those are from Africa, when they wake up in the morning, when we say Oriki, what is Oriki? Oriki is them speaking to your subconscious about you. They start telling you who you are, who your great-grandfather is, who your great-grandmother is. And you see the guy will just get up and say, yes, it's a man that you are talking to. 
Because there's a spirit in you that when you take charge of your thoughts, you will become the sum total of your thoughts. That is why we pray. Prayer is from your thoughts. You are not kneeling down before a God you see. You are saying in your mind that there's a God. Now, you are now saying in your mind that that God is able to do all things. Then you are now connecting to that God and say, Father, do it for me. You are now telling him, you are laying demands on the throne of grace from your thoughts. Why do people not pray? Because they don't believe. The people that don't pray, they've left their thoughts to just float. Do you know the tragedy of life is 80%, and that's a minimum, I don't want to be brutal, 80% of human beings are just existing. They are blown to and fro by the wind. They just go to work, come back, go to work. There's no plan to say, I am head. It's a thought. I am above. It's a thought. I am going to go back to school. It's a thought. Going to school starts with thinking. Being faithful in your marriage starts with things. You make a decision in yourself that when circumstances align for you to be unfaithful, you refuse. So that when those circumstances come, you are already prepared. Success is not on the battlefield. Success is before the battle. You prepare in your mind. You decide in your mind. I went for a seminar about a month ago, and the gentleman, um, Mr. Cosmas Maduka, is the CEO of Koskari's group in Nigeria. No education. No education. He said in those days, if he speaks English, that people will run away. But he went to a church, he heard the word of God, and decided that he's going to follow God. And then he wrote down that at age 19 or so, I'm going to buy, I'm going to do this. At this age, I'm going to build my own house. At this age, I'm going to buy. He had nothing. He had nothing. He had apprenticed with his father, his, his uncle, and the uncle ended up cheating him and gave him very little money. He said, thank you, sir. Because in his mind, he saw himself as a giant. The only place you cannot be limited is your mind. Mandela was in jail for 27 years. But South Africa was the one in jail. The apartheid regime were in jail. They locked his physical body up. But all over the world, they were shouting, free Nelson Mandela. He never bowed. He never, he never fell. He stood, although he was in chains. When somebody accesses your mind for good, you are blessed. When they access your mind for evil, you are doomed. The Bible says that you should guard your heart. That heart is your mind. You should guard it with all diligence. Because out of that mind, the issues of your life will for come forth. If you are always afraid, you have already lost. Your greatest fear will end up... There are some people, they are afraid that they will die of cancer. There is no cancer. But the devil deposited it because their auntie or their uncle or their mother or their cousin. Some people say, ah, in our family, is diabetes. What can I do? Then you release yourself. You say, it's just natural. In our family, we are fat. You just leave yourself. But your decision... In whatever area, my father had 20 wives. They used to fight. It caused problems. They almost killed all of us. I will not marry more than one wife. It's a thought. You have not even met a woman. I am going to be honest. I'm going to be diligent. I'm going to be hardworking. It's a thought. I'm going to steal from my employer. It's a thought. You put under subjection your mind. Now, what you feed your mind are the seeds that will germinate in your heart. I tell people that, well, you know, when somebody decides, you must make a decision, I will not smoke. You just decide. You will not drink alcohol. Don't join them in testing it for nonsense. Agree in your heart, you will forgive all. 
That's the difficult one. But once you have decided it, I can tell you, my wife and I were talking the other day, and she said, you know, I can honestly say I don't have anybody that I'm fighting. They can be fighting me, but I don't have anybody. Can you say that? Can you say that even the person that duped you, the person that stole your husband, the person that stole your wife, the person that did, did I don't, what can you say? It's a thought. It's not something you can do. You go to God and say, Father, I've heard your word. I'm not letting this thing define me anymore. I'm going to put myself under subjection. I put my thoughts. The most powerful weapon you have is your mind. It's between your ears. What are you thinking about? Philippians 4.8, Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true. This is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Don't allow your mind to be ro ro roaming around thinking. And how does your mind roam around? It's what you watch. For this week, I shared, I'm sure some people that didn't read my initial post, I posted on our church WhatsApp group that for this week only, I'm going to share everything that I listened to for that week. And I'm sure some of you will be surprised that I was listening to things three, four hours a day. And if you watch the things that I watched, you will see how my mind is influenced by the things that I watch. I did not add the things that I read to that list. So whatever things are true. Do you think Martin Luther King just woke up one day and started marching up and down? He started thinking of the situation of black people is not good. And I am going to do something about it. He had no army. He had no money. Do you know why nothing happened before him? Because many people say, what can we do? We will just continue to manage the way we are. Many of us are managing our lives as if our lives are worthless. There's no creature on the face of the earth that is as important that is as intelligent, that is as complex, that is as beautiful as the human being that God created and God said it was good. There is nothing special in anybody. Do you know that every individual has a gift that is unique to them? That somebody else may not have it the way they have it. The beauty of it is that some have thought their way through it and said, God, show me your gift. And then they ran in that gift. Others have thrown their hands up and said, I will just be managing my life. And what happens to their lives? They live a life of mediocrity. That will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Numbers 13, the whole of that chapter, Moses sent out 12 spies to go and look at Canaan. I'm not going to read the whole thing. And when they got there, they were given an assignment. Go and look. We want to conquer them. Ten of them got there and they subjected themselves to their thoughts. Let me read this part. Numbers 13 verse 30 to 33 only. I'm reading that. It says, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome. As soon as they arrived, ten of them said, Ah, we are finished to Hey, if you see the walls, if you see the army, if you see the giants, they are descendants of Anak. These people, so Caleb said, keep quiet. That's the way I operate. When you start telling me what I don't, I say, and if you don't, if, I, if you are too old, I can't tell you to keep quiet, I will close my ears. I will just be looking at you. Mm -hmm. If it's too much, I say, sorry, sir, I have to go. Sorry, ma. Because I know that we are not on the same level. <laughs> As I said that, I remember a fella song. He said, me and you know they for the same category. 
We are not. Because I'm operating in a spiritual realm like Caleb. Caleb said, let's go at once. We are well able to take the land. But the majority, and that is what happens even today, the majority will say, don't do it all. You better calm down. Are you the first person? Why you? Were you, are, you they are going to use your head to break the cook? They start giving you all sorts of useless um, proverbs. If the right brothers did not try to fly, of course, in trying to fly, they would have died. But today, all of us enter plane. If people, when, when Henry Ford started to say, I'm going to do a self-propelling car, because everybody uses horse to go around with horse carriage, they started laughing at him. His family, everybody was laughing at him. It was reported that it was his wife that said, go ahead, I believe you. They said after probably a thousand or more experiments of failure, Everybody said, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Self-propelling car. When these people now came, they said they can do a car that will drive itself. Even me, I said I won't enter. I won't enter because I'm, I will just manage myself. But they've started doing it. You limit yourself by saying it is only horses. It's because that's all you have seen. And you are operating in the realm of seeing. Your lifestyle is that you must see to believe. The lifestyle of a child of God is you must believe. Then you see. Free your mind. You must believe that your marriage will work although it is not working. Then you start walking towards it working. Then every day you wake up, Father, I thank you for my wife. I know she's not what I want right now, but I know that you will do all things together for good. That you will turn around my wife. I thank you for my husband. I know that he's doing this and he's doing that. But there is something that you can do. You will touch this man. He will stop roaming the streets. He will stop lying. He will stop being selfish. Father, I believe you. I stand on the authority of your word. If you have said it, you will do it. You have the capacity to do what you said you will do. Then heaven will come to attention. And say, who is that disturbing heaven? Then you say, I stand on the authority of your word. You say that for with God, all things are possible. You say that if I ask, I will. That's the mindset. But some people have the mindset of the useless man should go. The useless woman will never change. Even when they come and do marriage counseling, what they used to start is, Pastor, he will not change. Is it? This one is gone. Yeah, so he's gone. I will just help you to manage it and after some time he goes. Because if you don't believe, the Bible says if you have faith as a mustard seed, you must have faith. The pastor cannot have faith for you. The pastor can only help you to build your faith. It is your thoughts. I was in a church a long time in Nigeria. There's this guy called Kobams or Chobams. I don't know how they say his name. Is it Kobams? Kobams are Sukwa, right? He's blind. He can't see. He came to the church. He went up the pulpit with his walking stick. He went to the Mayim, the thing. He felt the thing. And he started to worship God. And he was praying. And then he gave testimony. He said when he was blind, his parents did not tell him he was blind. He said he lived in the barracks. So they told him that, look, you are... He thought everybody was blind. He, just, he didn't know people could see. He just was enjoying his life like... So they sent him to normal school. His friends were playing pranks on him. He says when he wants to run across the gutter, they will remove the stick. He will fall in the gutter. They will laugh. Will... But if anybody tried to mess with him, they will beat that person. So they built such confidence in him. He didn't sit by the gutter and say, Babi Allah, I'm blind. Babi Allah. So that's the mind that the parents have put upon him. He has put upon himself that a blind man can never make any good thing other than to beg. It's the mind. And what happens to such people? They beg. He went to school. Then after some time, they said, oh, you have to go to Braille school. Then he got separated from his friends. Then he went to Braille school. He learned how to, he plays the piano. He was on CNN. He's doing well. He's married. He has children. There's another guy I showed you some time ago. The man has no hands. He has no feet. Nick Joy and Roy Nick or something. He's married. If you see his wife, if you see his wife, you that you have eyes, you have hands, you have legs, you say you can't find wife. Nick, has got, he has no legs, he has no arms. His wife is beautiful. She carries him. And they have a baby. Or children now, maybe. 
It's your mind. The way you see yourself. When we were in school, there will be some girls who say, ah, this one is no go area. That's where you go. Even in, you must already, you must have confidence. What do you mean no go? For who? Although you don't have money, you don't have, but you have mouth. And you have God. You will go. Nobody will ever tell me that something is impossible. No, you can't buy a house in America. You can't build a house in America. What about if government comes? What about if the rain falls? What are, let, let it fall. The people that have been doing it, they don't have to help. This one was telling, these 10 people were telling them in, in Numbers 13 that they are like giants. Let's, let's, let's read. It says, then Caleb quieted them. We read that. 31 now says, but the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Who told you? their mind. You went to spy. The people you were spying didn't see you. It's just like peeping through this window and looking and say, ah! They are stronger than us. Are you not already defeated? They've already admitted in their mind which is a weapon of their warfare that they are defeated. It says they are stronger than we and they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they spied out, saying, the land though which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. The truth of that land is it's flowing with milk and honey. The land is good. Let me give you a quick testimony. When I first came to America, I wanted to take the bar exam. So I met somebody, the person said, oh, you can't take the bar exam. They don't recognize Nigerians. In fact, my uncle said, where did you go to school again? He's been here for 40 years or something. I said, oh, Ogun State University. I said, where? It's not University of Ibadan. Uh, they have university in Elgin State. I said, yeah, we have. <laughs> oh, it's just terrible. It's a terrible. It's, a, it's like a glorified secondary school. You think they're going to take those kind of degrees? I said, ah, we will manage. He said, no, I have to go back to school. He said, I should go back and study law from scratch. That whatever law they taught us it can't make sense. I said, thank you, sir. I spoke to somebody and said, you have to do masters and then you do this. I said, thank you, sir. Then I googled. I found out there's a place called Board of Law Examiners. So I wrote a letter with my own hand to them. I said, I went to Ogun State University, a glorified secondary school, Abby. And please, I want to take the bar. They wrote me back. And there are people that I met here that have believed in their mind that they can do it. They wrote me, is it, it's only stamp. I use stamp. There's no email. I just use stamp. And they sent me back a letter saying, well, if you did this, 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 this. So I took a photocopy of my transcript, sent it to them. They sent it back. They said, based on what you have in your transcript, it looks okay. But you have to go and accredit it with WES, World Evaluation Services. So I went to WES. Then they said, I have to get it from my school. The people say, oh, it will take one year. I flew to Nigeria. When I went to my university, 24 hours, I got my transcript. I have people here that are still crying. The transcript, this, this good Nigeria is so bad. I got my own. Then the year I got there, Abacha had taken the law school to Abuja. So I couldn't get my own from the law school. I got from my university, my glorified secondary school, that they have been abusing us. Then I went to Abuja. I, I, I flew to Abuja. I entered Okada. I've never entered Okada in my life. I was knocking the head of the guy. I said, don't speed up because there was, no, there was no vehicle to get there. I held it tight. I said, how much? He said, 50 naira. So I said, I'll pay 100, but don't speed. When we got to the law school, I said, Jesus, thank you. I went into the law school. The man told me, we just moved. And he showed me the, the room. If you saw files, files, he said, it would take six months. I said, I will get it today, sir. <laughs> he laughed. He laughed. He said, look. He said, look at this letter. It's from America. Somebody applied one year ago. I said, that's them. I said, I will get it today. And then, of course, I looked after him. <laughs> and, I, and I said, I will look after you even better. If you don't know, you don't know. Don't worry about it. So after I looked after him, they just took me. The way I looked after him was so glorious. He just said, please come. He took me to an office with AC. He said, he's from America. Just let him relax here. <laughs> they bought me soft drink for my looking after. I was just sipping my soft drink saying, I will get it today. <laughs> the next thing, the 
registrar of the law school. I heard her because I was in her auntie office. Then she shouted because they found it. They found my own. They found, in a monk, and they didn't have, it was just all over the floor. They found mine. Brought it to her. She now said, this man that you brought his own, what about all the others from, as they were shouting, they said, no, sir, ma, ma, sir, ma. I just entered the office. I said, good afternoon, ma. I said, I said, you are not the first person. I said, no, I'm different, ma. I'm appealing to you in the name of, please. I need to get, the woman said, they, they, I just kept, the woman said, you know something? You are bold. She just, it was just, they have typed everything. They've done everything. They just signed it. I collected it. I went back to, they got Okada. I sat on the Okada. I said, if you speed, we took me, I didn't go anywhere. I, I didn't even book a hotel. Because before I left America, and when I got to Abuja, I said, I'm not going to sleep in Abuja. I got there, bought a ticket, and flew back to Lagos. But if I had said, they said they will not do it. Ah, two years, I will be pumping gas in the gas station. It's not my fault. You know, it's America. Stop subjecting yourself to the thoughts of people concerning the situation they are in. They are different. I am wonderfully made. I am fearfully made. I belong to God. I resemble him. I am wonderfully made. I am fearfully made. I belong to God. I resemble him. That is why the devil trembles whenever he sees me singing. I am God's own. I'm the apple of his eye. That is why the devil trembles whenever he sees me singing. I am God's own. I'm the apple of his eye. I shared the testimony before. I'm a lawyer. I passed the bar. I did everything. My wife, we went to immigration. For those of you that have never heard the testimony, when it got to my turn, I got to the day, they said, it has been denied. I said, how? They said, sir, your, um, put, give me your A number. I gave them the A number again. I started shaking. And I don't shake. I started shaking. They said, so I'm sorry, it's denied. I said, how? They said, next. The person next just came to my front. So I joined the line again. It got to my turn. I said, I gave them the number again. Weren't you just here? I said, I was here. <laughs> I said, 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 I I started speaking in tongues. The guy, woman said, you better get out of my front because I don't know what you're talking about. I almost died. I said, what is this? It's impossible. It did not, I didn't even let it settle. That will be happy. I said, it's impossible. So I went home. I think I told my wife. I got, I googled the head of immigration in US, in New York. His name is Ron Atkinson or something. I never forget his name. I started writing him letter. I said, I don't know what you guys did, but this is my wife. We <laughs> should qualify. I wrote. They didn't reply. I wrote. They didn't. Every week, I started writing. I'll be sending a letter to him every week. I started writing. They didn't reply. I do certified mail, regular mail. Certified mail, regular mail. If I called people to come and help me talk, they would say, you are mad. I didn't even answer. I didn't even talk to anybody. One day, I was in my office. And the phone rang. I picked up the phone. Yes. He said, oh, this is Mr. Atkinson. I said, yes. Because I was already expectant. I believed God. It was not, this is not rumor. I believed God. My thoughts will not allow me to think that it is possible for them to deny her. The only way I can think is that if the denial was not overturned, that means God doesn't want me here. Let's go. We go. But that they will deny me? How? Why? He said, I saw your letters. I'm so sorry. I said, oh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I said, what can I do? The man talked. We talked. He said, okay, well, let's see what they did to you. He said, I said, okay, we finished. I wrote him a letter. He didn't call me back again. He said he would do something. I, didn't. I started writing him every week again or every two weeks. Sending letter. Regular me. Certified me. Regular me. When he saw that, you know, if you go and take somebody's property, God will not let you see Ogun Alaroka. Somebody, I, 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 I arrocade the man. He called me again. He said, please come to my office. We got there. My wife was, is here. We sat down with him. My wife was pregnant. With, I don't know which of the children. I have, I have four. <laughs> I think two. Number three, Tammy. 
The man said, oh, my wife is also pregnant. I said, oh, yeah, my wife is pregnant. We started talking about pregnancy. Oh, how are you doing? We talk, talk, talk. I'm just looking at him in my mind. I said, le boko so kod e baba. E le boko so. Favor, favor. In my mind, I didn't shout to because they would chase me out. I'm just looking at him. He's talking to my wife. They're laughing. I'm just looking at him. So he now said, okay, he's going to write me again. I said, okay. They didn't write us again. I started sending letters. They just sent us a letter for interview to come, and they just sent us. We went. Did we do interview or green card? They just said, they just sent the green card. They just said, just, just go and get it. You are, we don't know. I don't even think he knew what they did or they didn't, because he said, what did they do to you when we were there? He said, oh, it was, and we finished it. Amen? I thought you would shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because there's somebody here that they've closed the door. In your mind, you are closing the door. Open the door of your mind. It's a weapon of warfare. Don't allow them to say no. Don't die before your time. I know somebody, one of our pastors, diagnosed with breast cancer about 30 years ago. We rejected it by the grace of God. She's still here. Amen. My mother was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. When she called meeting, I took her for the biopsy. I took her for everything in Stony Brook. And she said, no, this is not a Nigeria. Where say, oh, is it fake miracle? It's not any fake. It's Stony Brook and um, not sure LIJ. I took her for the biopsy myself. Then she called meeting, family meeting. She's like, she, she trained me like her. So, well, you know, this is what the doctor said, and um, it's a very more aggressive form of cancer. And just know that um, I love you guys. They were doing my sister. Some of them were crying. I said, uh, I said, cancer. How? It's impossible. When I went to my to my wife, she said, what happened? I said, they said the doctor said. I didn't say they said she had. They said the doctor said, mommy has. But it's not, it's not possible. It's not possible. My mother is 86 now. When we went back to the doctor some time ago, in that after that, the doctor said they didn't see it, that maybe they made a mistake. I said, okay, I accept your mistake. <laughs> Abby, the doctor that we did one, then we went to Sloan Catering, they did another one, they found it, they saw it, it disappeared. If you don't believe, it's okay. My brother was diagnosed with stage four cancer, prostate. <sighs> I, I'll be preaching to you. You'll be fighting me that I didn't call you for bad day. I didn't call you for a Christmas. I'll say, ah, stage four, how? And my brother was stubborn. He don't want to go to doctor. He doesn't want to do this. He don't. But we know that God is faithful. And we, I didn't even allow it to sink. He did surgery. It's not that he didn't do surgery. But stage four, in fact, they, when he was going to do the surgery, they said he shouldn't do it again. They said, it's, there's no point. My sister, all of them rallied around and we they went. When we got there and they finished it, the doctor said that God must, the doctor and this doctor came from Italy to America. He's the only one that said, I will do it. He said, everything was in a hard knot. It, it didn't, it just didn't, it should have spread, but it was just hard. I said, uh -uh. I was looking at them. I believe God. Don't let people be intimidating you with their nonsense. You have authority over your thoughts. They have authority over their thoughts. You demand from the throne of grace what you want God to do for you. You see yourself the way God sees you. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you says who? Says the Lord. Amen. Not the thoughts that Trump think about me. Not the thoughts that Biden thinks about me. Not the thoughts that anybody... I know. Even God has thoughts towards you. And the Bible says, these thoughts are thoughts of peace. And not of evil. To give you a future. And to give you a hope. Genesis 127, God says, so God created man. Man is not male, it's mankind. He says he created us in his own image, in the image of God. Then he broke it down so that you know the genders. 
He created him male and female. He created them. God, the Almighty, the one that created the earth and spun it. I wish I could speak Yoruba. You know Okoto. Okoto is when you do that Okoto, the thing we used to do when we were young. It'd be spinning, but it will stop. God created the world. That's the way I imagine it. He spun it and it can't stop. And as he spun it, he put gravity so that you will not float away. And as he did that, he created you with a sperm. No solid, just liquid. This is the most, I've preached this many times when I say, because it blows my mind that you don't believe, some people don't believe in God. Somebody put liquid and put it into a woman and added an ovary or whatever egg and it fertilized and it started growing inside the womb and then inside that growth is a skull that is hard started to grow. Have you thought about it before? Inside that, miles and miles of arteries started to form. How did they form? Have you ever thought about that? A heart will now develop. How did the heart come from the liquid? And that heart starts to beat. And that heart starts to pump the blood. And the blood starts to go around and around. And then it started to go do a brain. Inside that woman, he put a brain. Inside that skull, he put the eyes. He put the nose. He put the ears. And that baby will not breathe. And then he put an umbilical cord, connected it to a placenta, connected it to the woman. As the woman eats, the baby is feeding, and the baby is not breathing, and the baby is there for nine months, eight months, seven months. And then, at the right time, at the accepted time, when God said it is time, that woman goes into labor. And your labor in life is when you start to complain, not knowing that if you can endure, if you can persevere, the woman that is in labor crying, shouting, ah, they are going to kill me. You are not going to die, but you will live to declare the glory of the Lord. When that baby comes out from that small canal, if you put that baby again into liquid, the baby will die. The same baby that for nine months did not breathe air. Eyes, ears, nose, heart, lung, liver. If you ever go to doctor, you say, what's gallbladder? They say, you don't need it. I say, but why is it there? They say, don't worry, they can take it out. <laughs> the intricacy of man, then you now subject yourself to foolishness. The God that has finished it, he has perfected you. He's now telling you that my thoughts towards you are for good. And now your own thoughts towards yourself are evil. Let's rise. I don't have time to preach today. I want you to just talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Say, help my thoughts. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, help me to dwell on these things. Let me begin to say, I can, instead of I cannot. Let me begin to say, I am wonderfully and fearfully made. Let me begin to prophesy. Let me begin to do the plan and the will of God. Let me live in purpose. Let me not fall. Let me not fail. Father, I pray for your children. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Father, let them put every evil thought under subjection. Let them arise and begin to shine. Let them fulfill the plan and purpose of God for their lives. I pray for those that the enemy has invaded their mind through alcohol, through drugs, through fear. I pray for you today that the hand of God will touch you. It will deliver you from every kind of addiction. Do you know unforgiveness is an addiction? Anger is an addiction. Pride is an addiction. You are delivered today in the mighty name of Jesus. You will begin to see yourself as a giant, not as a grasshopper. That story in Numbers 13, those people said that they are stronger than them and that we were as grasshopper in our own eyes as we were in their own eyes. That will not be your portion. You will see yourself as a giant. You will see yourself as beautiful. You will see yourself as blessed. You will see yourself as highly favored. You will be above always. You will never be beneath. God will bless your going out. God will bless your coming in. Every thought that is not of God, we bind it in the mighty name of Jesus. I release upon you the grace for the Spirit of God to move in your life. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you will succeed. Yes, you will be heard. Yes, your marriage will work. Yes, you will be healed. Yes, you will be set free. Yes, 
you will be a blessing. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.